Einstein is probably my, my main hero. You know, I, everyone has heroes. Einstein's my hero. And, and here's why. Because Einstein invented so many things. He actually got his Nobel Prize for predicting that, for explaining how electrons are moved from metal surfaces um, when they're being bombarded by light. Completely different theory called the photoelectric effect. It was puzzling people at the time. And as such, he became one of the main architects of quantum mechanics, which he then didn't believe. But he became one of the main people who started that revolution. He also invented that he had the first credible theory of how you can get electrons to transition between energy levels in atoms. And that eventually, that work eventually was its fundamental to the invention of the laser. And his theory of general relativity is his most ambitious project. And basically what he did is he unified a, a, a geometric picture of gravity that's quite intuitive and a, a ferocious piece of mathematics called differential geometry, which physicists hadn't really used on mass um, until he got hold of it and shook out of it this theory, which to me was maybe 10, 20, 30, even 40 years ahead of its time. And it's taken us 100 years to verify directly that gravitational waves are actually there by detecting them on Earth. Now, that doesn't mean that this is the first hint of gravitational waves. Um, actually, we knew that gravitational waves were probably there by studying radio pulsars. There was a Hulse and Taylor did an experiment where they showed that a pair of um, compact objects called neutron stars were losing energy and therefore spinning around each other faster. And they inferred that from radio pulses that one of the objects was emitting. And that happened in the 1980s. And they won the Nobel Prize for that work. So that was what I would call circumstantial evidence for gravitational waves. And a few years before that, a man called Ray Weiss at MIT was asked by the MIT faculty to teach general relativity. And it wasn't his area. So he had to go and learn it. And in learning it, he realized that there'd been this IDs kicking around for a few years on using an interferometric detector to try and see gravitational waves directly on Earth. And he wrote what I think is probably the most important unpublished physics publication <laughs> in, that I know about in, in any subject. Um, and it came out in MIT in the Research Lab for Electronics. And that was the blueprint for LIGO. And that was in the mid-1970s. And 30 years, 40 years later, there's two LIGO sites and they're operating. And Eventually, after beating down all the technical noise sources, which took forever, I mean, you can't imagine how many things come and try and spoil this party. You know, pick up from the ground vibrating, everything has to be isolated from the ground, pick up from the electronics, um, spurious transients from strain releases in the wires holding up the mirrors. All these technical noise sources have to get killed. And there's literally thousands of scientists working on beating down these technical noise sources and upping the laser power and increasing the mass of the mirrors and there's people inventing newer and more sophisticated suspensions. Glasgow are very important in that. And at the end of the day, we're having, very happy to have this a chance to, to, to spread the news that gravitational waves have been seen.